Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Moxa Security Talks. My name is Jesse, I'm the host for this perspective panel discussion. Today we have two experts from the industry, Helen Chang, General Manager of IDC Taiwan and Savir Sudakov, Solution Architect from Moxa. Hello. Okay, all right. So today our first topic is about market trends. Now in the past, we have seen the shift from serial to ethernet, from IT to OT, from IT to OT to convergence. We have seen a lot of technologies from the IT being used in the OT environment. So my question to you guys is, what is the major challenges that industries face right now when they are facing OT cybersecurity? So Helen, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure, thank you. I think when we talk about uh, the integration of industry uh, system, it's actually highly relevant to Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is a strategy of operation transformation, brings together process, technology, and organization. This is to deliver extreme efficiency, quality, and performance with consideration to the implication of people and the planet today. And I think one key thing to make this happen is IT-OT convergence. Our latest research shows that around 49% of worldwide IT and OT management and uh, technical operation regarded security as the top one barrier for IT-OT conversions. Followed by that are legacy application, too many decision makers, lack of expertise, and lack of uh, business case for initiative. And if we zoom into the issue of security toward IT-OT, Convergence, we found there are five key challenges that companies are facing today. So first, over 40% of global companies, they actually separate their security management and operation into IT and OT. The communication between IT and OT is also very less. Second, we found that there are many legacy systems in a production sites today. These systems are usually closed, isolated, and very hard to patch. This actually brings high risk when this system connects to uh, the new technology such as 5G. Third, we found that there are more and more con uh, devices connect to a company environment and to the production site. These devices are usually, they have their default password uh, that won't be or never be updated or to reset. They become the security flaws and make an opportunity for hackers to attack. Fourth, uh, we know that OT environment today are highly heterogeneous, not only for the access management, but also for the different protocols. So it's very hard for a company to manage all of this. The last challenge we want to highlight is that OT operation very focused on availability and utilization. Uh, we know that there are not many practice uh, uh, for network segmentation. The visibility across this uh, infrastructure is not good as well. So that means any security incident could cause larger scale damage. These are the challenges we see today. Okay, thank you, Helen, very much. Uh, the research that you just mentioned, I believe that it kind of also shows that the OT network is a bit more vulnerable compared to IT networks. And we see that when it comes to responsibility, IT and OT personnel should communicate more with each other and more often. So Severe, do you take note of the same trend in the market? Yeah, sure, indeed. I, I can agree with all these five issues that you just mentioned. And uh, historically, uh, we've been working more with OT people. Uh, so during our daily job, we also, also notice all these issues. But I just want to highlight one thing uh, that is uh, regarding to the organizational uh, mm -hmm. issue, because there are both technical and organizational issues. So in terms of organizational issue, it's not only a uh, lack of communication between IT and OT departments, but also we've noticed uh, a general deficiency in OT uh, personal security awareness. So I would say it's not only about um, how to protect the existing systems, but also uh, it is reflected in the way how they uh, design their systems. So we still see a lot of flat networks uh, with several uh, different services using the same network without any segmentation. So I would say it's more like a mindset issue. And uh, I think that 
all involved parties in the OT system design and uh, operation, including asset owners, including, of course, vendors, including system integrators. They all should create a cybersecurity mindset so we can make OT systems better. Okay, so basically there is still room for improvement when it comes to security awareness among OT professionals, right? Yeah. And you've also mentioned the right mindset. So you believe that the right mindset will gradually reduce uh, risk for the OT networks and OT environments upon cyber attacks. Okay? Sure. All right. So thank you, Helen and Severe, for your insights into what you perceive from the market trends. So should we move on to the next question? Yeah, sure. Yes. All right. So the second question is that there are a lot of cybersecurity startups recently, and they have been advocating the idea of visibility of IDS, mm. which is intrusion detection systems. and so the question is, will these concepts of visibility and IDS become the mainstream in tomorrow? And if that's the case, are they a good, uh, good way to protect the businesses? Is it enough? Or do you think there are other perspectives to take into consideration? So Helen, would you like to go first? Yeah, thank you. I think to work smarter, we'll secure and manage the legacy. We had noticed that basin class manufacturers today are giving their physical assets a digital profile so that they can know and understand the real-time situation of these assets, even for a lightweight sensor. I think visibility gives these manufacturers a awareness of timing and accuracy of these security events and how these events link to people, machines, and connection. So I think the ideal way to secure OT environment can focus on three things. First, to build the visibility, just like we mentioned earlier. Second, to do network segmentation to strengthen the level of security. Third, uh, I think to secure the critical assets is important, especially these kind of assets, their age are usually over 10, 20 years. I think to combine these three uh, to make sure that the secure, uh, security and lower down the risk is important. Exactly, okay, so besides visibility, Helen also mentioned things like network segmentation and also securing critical assets. So Severe, what is your take on this? What is Moxa's take on this? Yeah, I think uh, part of the reason of, of your question is because uh, we all hear about these OT cybersecurity startups, which mainly deal with the visibility part. And I, I think it's a, it's a very uh, you know, good trend and we should be really thankful to these OT startups for educating the market. And uh, IDS itself, the product that they are offering, it's quite a good tool to begin with uh, because it can help uh, asset owners to inventory their system and also try to see what uh, potential problem they already have currently. But I don't think that IDS itself is enough. Of course, uh, cybersecurity should be holistic. And uh, the problem with IDS is that uh, it will report about abnormal activities in your system and uh, there should be somebody who can follow up. So IDS should always come with a team. And uh, we can refer to a maturity model and uh, IDS is considered as a very advanced tool. And by advanced, again, I mean that there should be a cybersecurity professional team who will handle all the feeds from the IDS. Unfortunately, what I see and my colleagues see on the market, uh, not uh, many customers are really ready. So they really need to invest into people, into capabilities, and that is a much bigger investment comparing to you know the cost of the IDS product itself. So uh, in short, I think it's, it's a good way, but it's definitely not enough. So there should be you know, more investment to be made. Got it. So it's technology and also people, right? Yeah. So in that case, what do you think is a more feasible way or a more feasible approach? Because you mentioned that IDS requires a dedicated professional team to be there to monitor. And in case something happens, they need to determine what actions to be taken. So in your opinion or in your foresight, how will you imagine the industrial cybersecurity solutions in the future? What would it be like? Yeah, I think um, according to what we just discussed, uh, probably the in, in the short term, uh, OT cybersecurity will evolve into uh, detection uh, from detection only into detection followed by automatic protection, mm -hmm. and uh, that 
might actually sound a little bit of a nightmare to OT people. Uh, but uh, I personally believe if the, if the protection logic is transparent, so we can really understand how it works, and of course, if we test it really thoroughly, then there should be no issues. So it's a matter of, you know, making the technology better. So uh, that would be uh, my take on, you know, this short term development. And we actually already see some of our customers, they are implementing active protection in their systems uh, because this way they can really have fewer efforts on maintaining it. And in the long term, um, as a vendor representative, of course, I believe that uh, all vendors uh, should work on secure by design concept. And uh, what we see in our company is that IC62443 as a standard, as a cybersecurity framework is getting more and more popular and more and more important. So it's not only from the vendor side, but also from asset owners. They like this framework and they like to adopt it and they are asking for it. So vendors, they start to implement secure development lifecycle. That is uh, 4-1, the chapter of 62443. And uh, finally, after that, they can proceed to having um, the 62443-4-2 certified products that would ensure that all the products are secure by design and have all the necessary features. And uh, there is another trend that I see uh, by, by talking you know, through, through conversations with our customers. So the feedback is uh, the cybersecurity products, they are a bit uh, complicated because in general cybersecurity is a, a new area of knowledge for OT people. So OT people usually want to have cybersecurity products a little bit more user friendly. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to, to, to make it user friendly for both parties, for IT and OT. And uh, that would, you know, enhance the adoption rate, I think. All right. Thank you, Sabir. So basically what you just said is the future of OT cybersecurity solutions, it should be simpler, it should be more user-friendly, and the components, the devices, they should be secured by design to lower the risk, right? I see, very interesting.